Raoult's law is only valid for a small number of mixtures, typically those whose components are very similar. The figure on the right shows the partial pressure of each component of a two-component system as well as the total pressure. The dashed line shows the partial pressure if the two components form an ideal mixture, while the solid lines show the actual partial pressure measured. We are of course concerned with what happens in the real world, so to account for the deviation from ideal conditions, we define something called the activity. The activity of component J is defined as gamma J times the mole fraction of component J, where gamma J is the activity coefficient, meaning it represents the deviation from ideal conditions for component J. We will use activities again and again throughout the course, as well as the activity coefficient, in order to account for deviations from ideal conditions. We can employ Raoult's law to substitute in the partial pressure of component J divided by the partial pressure of the pure component J for the mole fraction of component J. Since Raoult's law is based on the actual partial pressure of the pure component in real solutions, it is only truly applicable when the mole fraction of J is close to 1, unless there is a good measurement of the activity coefficient. For real solutions, Raoult's law only does well when the mole fraction of the component in question is close to 1. It does not describe very dilute components in real solutions well. A much better quantification of dilute solutions is to use Henry's law, which relates a mole fraction and partial pressure of a mixture together with a constant. The vapor pressure of a volatile solute J is proportional to its mole fraction in a solution meaning that the partial pressure of component J is equal to the activity of that component J times K sub H, where K sub H is Henry's constant and is characteristic of a solute and chosen so that the straight line predicted by Henry's law is tangent to the experimental curve when the mole fraction is close to zero. Henry's law is similar to Raoult's law in that the actual partial pressure is proportional to the mole fraction of the component, the major difference is that with Henry's law, the partial pressure of the pure component is equal to a value, being Henry's constant, which is simply an extrapolation of a straight line to when the mole fraction is equal to 1. Again, to reiterate, Henry's law is meant to model very dilute solutions, meaning the mole fraction is very small. Using Henry's law at high activities would give unphysical conditions. Let's now use Henry's law to look at an example of a very dilute solution in this case, we're going to look at a dilute solution of carbon dioxide in water at 298 Kelvin. And what we're going to calculate is the molal solubility, which means moles of carbon dioxide per kilogram of water, um, assuming that we have a carbon dioxide pressure of 3.3 times 10 to the minus 4 atmospheres, which corresponds to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in air. What we're going to assume is that our Henry constant is going to be equal to 1.63 times 10 to the 3 atmospheres. So using the definition of Henry's law, what we can write is the partial pressure of CO2 is equal to the activity of CO2 times Henry's constant. And what we saw previously was that the activity of something, in this case of CO2, is going to be equal to the activity constant times the mole fraction of CO2. And in this case, since we're going to assume that we're in ideal dilute conditions, we're going to let this activity coefficient be equal to 1, or at least we're in a region where Henry's law, since we are dealing with a real solution, describes very well the dilute part of this curve, even if it isn't an ideal mixture. From here, what we can write if we're going to try to create something that defines the, the mole fraction of CO2, well, that's just simply going to be equal to the number of moles of CO2 divided by the number of moles of CO2 plus the number of moles of H2O. What we're going to assume in this problem is that the number of moles of CO2 are going to be much, much less than the number of moles of H2O. And I think this is a pretty intuitive um, assumption that we can make because we're basically trying, what we're looking at is the, how much CO2 is dissolved in water, but water is going to be the huge component. If you have a kilogram of water, a very, very, very small fraction of that water is going to be CO2. And so there's going to be far, far, far many more moles of water than CO2. And so what that means is that then we can state that the mole fraction of CO2 is simply going to be equal to the number of moles of CO2 divided by the number of moles of H2O. And it's just because this addition down here at the bottom, since my moles of H2O is so much bigger, then we can just neglect this number of moles of CO2. So if we start to substitute these terms now into our original definition of Henry's law, we have the partial pressure of CO2. Well, the activity is just 
the activity coefficient of CO2 times the mole fraction of CO2 times Henry's constant. In this case, we're going to let the activity coefficient be equal to 1 because, again, we're letting or we're assuming the fact that Henry's law describes very well the very dilute part or the very dilute region we are on our pressure curve or our partial pressure curve. We're also going to allow our mole fraction to be equal to the number of moles of CO2 divided by the number of moles of H2O times Henry's constant. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to rearrange and I'm just going to write partial pressure of CO2 divided by Henry's constant and that's going to be equal to the number of moles of CO2 divided by the number of moles of H2O. Now of course we haven't defined what is the number of moles of H2O or the number of moles of CO2 However, what we are trying to calculate is the molality of CO2 in this solution, given this partial pressure. And what a molality is, is number of moles of CO2 divided by the kilograms of water in this case. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to then calculate our number of moles of H2O based on as if there was a kilogram of water. And so what that means is that our number of moles of um, H2O is going to be 1,000 times 1 mole divided by the molar mass, which is 18.01 grams. And so it's going to be this is what we're going to substitute in for our number of moles of H2O. And in the end, what that'll give us then is a value, once we solve for the number of moles of CO2, we'll essentially be solving for the molality of CO2. So if we substitute that in, I have partial pressure of CO2 divided by Henry's constant. That's going to be equal to the number of moles of CO2. And that's going to be divided by 1,000 times 18.01. And so now I'm just simply going to solve for the number of moles of CO2. And so in the end, what I'm going to get is 1,000, which is part of this number of moles of H2O. I have the partial pressure of CO2, which is 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 4. I'm going to divide that by the 18.01, which came from the molar mass of water. And then finally, I have Henry's constant, 1.63 times 10 to the 3. And when I multiply all these numbers together, I'm going to get 1.12 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of CO2. But again, because I used one kilogram of water when I was trying to calculate my number of moles of H2O, then what this also ends up being is the molality, or a measure of the molality, meaning moles of CO2 per kilogram of H2O. Now here's the really neat thing about Henry's Law, is that this constant, this Henry's Law constant, doesn't have to be defined just in terms of relating mole fraction to um, partial pressure, we can actually also use it to relate the partial pressure to the molality directly. And it just takes a different Henry's constant, one that's been calibrated to do this exact operation. And so instead of going through all of this um, effort to convert mole fraction into number of moles and then be able to use that to then reason out the molality of something, we can just use a different Henry's constant and we end up with a relationship between the molality directly and then this partial pressure. And so in this case what we're going to do is just have a different Henry's law constant which does exactly this. And so that's why I'm calling it k prime of h. And in this case it's just going to be 29.3 atmospheres kilograms per mole is the units that goes with this type of Henry's constant. And so then if I substitute these numbers in directly will I get partial pressure of CO2 divided by this new Henry's constant that's calibrated to calculate directly the molality of, in this case, CO2. And so then the molality of CO2, again, it's the same partial pressure, 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 4, divided by 29.3. And I get the 1.12 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of CO2 divided by kilograms of my solvent, being in this case H2O. In either of these cases, all these Henry's constants that I'm going to be drawing from, these things are just coming from tables. They're just the kind of thing that you pull from backs of textbooks or from Google. So you, as long as you have a reputable source and you can find an appropriate Henry's um, law constant, then you can jump either between molality or mole fraction 
in terms of trying to calculate from or relation or trying to relate the partial pressure to whatever your solution is, the dilute component of whatever solution is.